phacosuction in an intumescent cataract. A combined denounced congenital flap is being raised about 6 mm in the upper temporal quadrant, 6 mm marker and a 6 mm straight of sclerin thickness incision. A lamellar pocket is created about 2.5-3 mm in length. A drop of powder iodine 5 percent on the tunnel. Some amount of iodine gets impregnated in the tunnel, and that's the reason why I wish to put it at this stage about 3 mm entry into the anterior chamber at the anterior end of the tunnel that was created. It's an intumescent swollen cataract with hardly any anterior chamber. Tripan blue staining for a minimum duration. You inject and immediately it's taken out. Ideally, it's injected under the air bubble. AC is deepened as much as it's possible so that the entire cataract zonal diaphragm is pushed backwards. Tunnel floor entry. Look that I'm entering the antechamber not through the anterior end of the tunnel, but at the limbus, I perforate the floor of the tunnel and enter the chamber. In this way, the viscoelastic remains in the antechamber tightly packed so that AC does not shallow. It's uh, quite a slippery situation. Uh, the, there's no base. Base is very soft, so I can't support the capsule to tear it with the, case, with the cystitome. I'm trying to extend on both the sides of the rexis so that it gets completed. So it's not yet completed. You cannot stop at this situation, otherwise it will go to the periphery. Now I stop it in the center of the uh, pupillary zone, form the chamber. Few drops of lignocaine is injected into the anterior chamber at this stage as it's being done in the topical anesthesia. Internal opening is enlarged from 3 to about 6, 6.5 millimeters. Now, Utrata forceps used to carefully bring it back and complete the circle. It's a very small rexis. And now it won't tear off to the periphery because of the intact rexis margins. I would like to remove the maximum amount of cortex, especially in the periphery, mid periphery part of uh, the uh, lens which offers maximum uh, force for rexis to run off. The, uh, with the long uh, Sinsky hook, the lens is rotated inside the capsular bag and uh, the lens matter, the cortical matter is churned with the same instrument and is aspirated. Depends upon uh, how dense is the material, sometimes it comes out easily. In this case, it's a little more challenging and a little more time consuming to go to the every particular quarter to remove as much particle material as it's possible, go up to the equatorial area without tearing the rexis. You should be very careful at the rexis margin not to extend uh, any, not to induce any tear and allow it to extend to the periphery. The left half of the cortex is clear but right half you still see a lot of particle material. Bring it to the axis of your Sensky hook. Now we can see more and more cortex coming in. So this will reduce the intracapsular tension and you will not have a runoff of the capsule to the periphery when you are tearing it. With the Utrada forceps. So uh, that's an adequate emptying of the capsular bag. With the Vanas, make a tangential cut on your left side, hold the flap and create a secondary axis. I realized that the nucleus is not very dense, it's not very large in size. So my aim now is to not to lose the axis and complete it. So it's a relatively a small axis, but I'm sure that I'll be able to remove the nucleus through this very comfortably without putting a strain on the zonules. Always uh, keep imagining the zonules at every uh, 
point of view in these uh, advanced cases because zonules will be quite lax and it's easy to tear them off causing a prolapse of the equator. It's easily bisectable. So a main nucleus is taken out without putting any stretch on the tunnel. Now cortical aspiration is not very difficult but it's important to go to every clock hour in the in the uh, capsular bag at the equatorial area and remove chunks of uh, cortex. Cortex would have lost its architecture. It does not have the thread-like or continuous architecture. It's in clumps. So you'll have to go and remove uh, at every clock hour to avoid the surprise uh, cortical appearance post-operatively in the antechamber. Polish the anterior capsule and evacuate the lens epithelial cells as much as it's possible. There is no superior rectus. Uh, it's not necessary at all for this technique. And there is no need for any injection which really facilitates with uh, decreased orbital pressure. And uh, upthrust is generally not seen in these patients if you have not injected anything into the orbit. Some scarification of the capsular bag is seen, so you have to massage the area to remove the capsule, capsular debris. IOL is implanted in the capsular bag very easily without folding it so that the architecture of the lens is maintained. And uh, the uh, haptic optic junction is aligned to the 3 and 9 o'clock position to minimize the disc photopsia. Now, uh, I've injected a little more viscoelastic. I wanted to enlarge the uh, rexis on one side where it's overlapping much more than the other side. Make a small nick, inject viscoelastic again and hold the nick and uh, run it around so that the chance for phimosis postoperative late in the postoperative post period is avoided. That's adequate uh, sized rexis now, which is overlapping on the edge of the lens. And remove the viscoelastic from every part of the uh, eye, and that will be the end of surgery. Fibrin glue is applied so that the candidate is co-opted. And at the end of surgery, there is no need for bandage. The eye is completely sealed. There are no openings. Thank you.